This is Eliagnus pungens, and um, it is a, uh, a very durable evergreen shrub. Uh, these get quite large, actually. I'll look that up, but I know they get about 8 to 10 feet tall and as wide. Um, very drought resistant and bulletproof and the deer tend to leave this alone as well. So um, if you're in need of uh, out here, this is a, a green belt that they don't really want to spend a lot of time and effort on. This is typical of how I see this plant used. Is, uh, it's, it's very low or no maintenance if you give it enough room for the way it behaves. So. Um, uh, that's a good way to use these. If you're going to use them in mass the way they have here, if you're patient, uh, certainly you can plant these six feet on center. Uh, these look like they're about five feet on center, so I think that's a good infill. These have been planted, I believe, for about three to four years, and this is the size you're seeing. Some of these are only about four to five feet tall, and this one over here is six feet tall by six feet wide and if they're getting regular water they you would expect them to do this these are on drip irrigation and I don't know how much they're getting but they're they're doing just fine um, so what I like about the plant is its drought resistance it's very low maintenance and the deer usually leave it alone so it's it's good for that kind of application it's got kind of a nice arching habit also um, and it's nice and dense as well. So what I don't love about it is I used to call this plant Ugly Agnes. When I was in college learning plants, that was how I remembered the name, and it really stuck with me. So I apologize to anybody who really likes this plant. But um, I don't think it's that great looking. Um, it has a lot of brown on it. See these brown stems? It also has um, the leaves are veather, very leathery that's part of what makes them drought resistant but they're just kind of dull and um, the reverse on the back of the leaf looks like the leaf is dead or, or dying see how brown that is so there's Eliagnus um, variegata and I much prefer that that said it's it's I wouldn't use it in mass because it's bright yellow uh, I got a lot of yellow in it, but um, if I'm looking for evergreen shrubs to do this job, um, there's others I probably prefer, like a manzanita, um, and they'll do the job just as well. I just don't love the coloration. Do you see that grouping there? See how you're seeing the reverse on the back of all those leaves? And the general tonality of the grouping to me is brownish green, and uh, I just don't find that super attractive. But um, if that works in what you're doing in your design, give this one a try. It's kind of one of the bulletproof plants to choose from, and it certainly does that job. That's Eliagnus pungens. Here's Eliagnus used as a uh, barrier planting along this wall. I'm down lower than the wall, by the way. These plants have been they've filled in very nicely, and they've been pruned back, and they're pushing a lot of new growth. They're trying to keep that planting at about three and a half feet high. And uh, as I mentioned, these want to be a lot larger than that. So um, probably once to twice a year, they're going to need to uh, push these back maintenance-wise. But uh, it's not a bad looking grouping when it's all filled in, but just be aware of that brownish color uh, that I mentioned earlier. By the way, these have a very fragrant flower. They smell excellent and um, the flower is fairly inconspicuous you don't really see them but uh, you won't miss the fragrance I, I noticed this smell coming from somewhere that I couldn't really see an obvious source of once and tracked it down and it was coming from the Eliagnus so these smell amazing when they're in bloom and I believe that's in the spring also these are listed to get 10 to 15 tall a foot tall and wide so be aware of how large they get.